Let's get started. I think now's a good time to get started. Don't you? I think so. Um, what I wanted to look at today, um, I am going to get into Cucumber JS in just a minute, uh, kind of writing our own thing. So last time we looked at Cucumber, the boilerplate, um, we didn't write our own though. And I think writing your own test scenarios can be, or your own stuff can be pretty tricky. So. Try to get that working. And, but before we do that, somebody emailed or reached out to me for a question on right click. Apparently when they were using right click, it would only work in Chrome. Um, it wasn't working in Safari or Firefox. So I'm gonna test this on Safari and just try this out and see what I can get. Applies a right click, last move to, see if I can get the error they were getting. They were getting a move to object error and I'm um, not sure what that was about. I've never really used right click all that much. But um, yeah, we're gonna go ahead and open up a terminal window. Bring that. Uh, recording. Oops. All right, let that log in. And then I think I'm gonna go to my stable and um, I'm just gonna run my test real quick just to make sure everything works on my stable. What's up everyone? This is Dirty Phonics. Uh, yeah, yeah. Oh, that was a really short playlist. That was cute, but... Um... With that other starts about discovered all this is all podcast. Sorry, I'm trying to find a I think I've done that before. Yeah, there we go. Let's do some unwind. Yeah, that sounds good. Okay, should I expect to have an attribute is not a function. So there's a test in here that I'm gonna just get rid of. Um, chai. So I'm just gonna remove that test so we don't need to worry about it. And then I'm also gonna edit my package JSON because I want to make sure that I'm not loading anything I don't need to. So I've got Chai Webdriver IO in here. Um, I'll leave it in here. I don't really need to have it, but I'm not gonna mess around with it. So then I'm gonna edit my test. I'll set up a, a simple test. So we're gonna do right click.js. And then in this, describe, right click. Okay, so it should work. And from there, I'm going to open my URL, just a basic page. And then um, let's see, what are we testing here? Specs file, we're testing in Chrome, my local host. So I don't think I have my local host running. So I'm just gonna switch this out with the WebDriver IO website. Um, that way we can easily test that. And then um, running stand uh, Selenium standalone, so that's good. Okay, so I'm gonna go there. I'm going to browser.right click, and then I'm gonna pass in my selector. And then, um, let's see, so WebDriver IO, their homepage. Uh, what do we wanna right click? Right click, left click, right click. So right click is gonna be there. So what if we wanna like try saving this image? So I'm gonna right click on this image to get to the inspect, but uh, let's try right clicking. I don't actually know what it does. Um, let's see, I probably want to do header image. Uh, 
let's just right click on the main nav. Let's just do that. So I'll pass in my selector of main nav and then I'll do a browser.pause because I want to kind of see what happens. So I'm going to wait for five seconds and then it'll close down. Okay, pretty basic test. Let's try and run this and see what happens. Um, I'm hoping that things work just fine. I'm guessing that the move to object error is uh, possibly an issue with trying to right click on an element that's either hidden or below a certain point. And then we should see right click. Okay, so yeah, that did pop up. That's what we were expecting. No errors there. Uh, although we did have a timeout come through because I did pause it for five seconds. Um, you can again increase that timeout if you want to under your Mocha Ops. You go to timeout um, and then I'll set it to 30 seconds. There we go. 30,000 milliseconds, 30 seconds. Okay, so we right click on there, that works. I'll pause just for one second instead. And then let's try right clicking on the footer and without scrolling down to it. And let's see if this works. So we'll just pass in a selector of footer. Save that. And then uh, while I'm here, I'll also, let's see, we'll wait another second. And then right click on another element. And this element is going to be Hold on. All right. This element is going to be something that's hidden behind another element. So what would that be? Or maybe a, an element that's hidden. Um, let's see, we have this API version here and a little drop down pops out. So what if we try and click an element that's hidden? So we have a drop down menu and then in the drop down menu we have these LIs. So I'm gonna try and click that 3.4. So I'm gonna do a, that's a link, and it has text of version 3.4. So this is a link selector, uh, link text selector. So it's gonna try and right click on that link text. And let's see, and then we'll pause like 10 seconds. Well, maybe not 10 seconds, let's do five seconds. Oh my gosh, there's a gnat in my eye. I have plants in here and the gnats, the fungus gnats like living in in the plants in the soil and i need to treat them okay Boop. there we go so with the website right click on the header <coughs> i actually don't know what you can do after right clicking I wonder if it's like a, oh, so it actually scrolled down to the bottom. And it couldn't be found. So maybe I need to do a better link. So instead of doing this um, text selector, I'm just gonna go to use this class of drop down menu and then um, first child. I'm just gonna click the first uh, A element that's under there and those worked so I'm gonna skip past those and let's see so let's see if it throws an error well, it did right click, but it didn't really right click anywhere. I guess because it's in the top right corner. So it's still passed. Okay, so that's that worked. So what's going on? Where's the um, move to object throwing an error at? So let's see, element and then button press. Um, I'm going to view the source of button press. Which button? Okay, so that's right, right clicking a button. So what I just did there was... Um, Right click uses these two uh, commands. So if you go into the view source, 
you can see it does handle mouse button command and then it calls with certain things. So handle mouse button command, what does handle mouse button command use? So we've got to go out to helpers. Handle mouse button command. Okay, so it uses button press here. It gets an element. If it's Safari, then it tries to move to that element. Oh yeah, I just remembered this was an error in um, Safari and not Chrome. So I'm guessing this move to is what's throwing the error. So let's try uh, running this in Safari. So I'll go back over here and then instead of Chrome, change that over to Safari. And since I'm on a Mac, it should work. I mean, it should run fine. Allow, okay, so I gotta go into Safari. As you can tell, I haven't tested in Safari yet. So they're saying I gotta come up here and then go to allow remote automation. That's a pretty nice little security feature. Makes sense. I like this piano. I miss it. I miss playing piano, but I've got other things. I might actually start playing it tomorrow. Getting back into it tomorrow. That's funny that it's orange. So it's trying to execute some stuff. It found the location. Still passed. So what if we turn these back on and see if those are failing? Oops. So if this doesn't work, I'm just gonna leave it be. Or I mean, if this doesn't break, I'm just gonna leave it be and see. So I should have a right click. Well, I should actually scroll down to the bottom of the page too. Well, it all passed. I didn't actually see it do the clicks and everything. And for some reason, I've got Safari still open. I don't know why. It looks like this isn't having much of an issue. So I think I'm going to have to get more information from the person who asked to see what exactly is going on with theirs because I'm not having too much trouble with this right click. So, um, but that's the right click command and how you use it. Um, it does pop open the, the system menu. Um, I wonder if there is a like context menu. There's a context, let's see, menu. You could do a right click and then follow it up with a left click. And on the left click, you could do that. Uh, let's see, add value, click, let's, let's click. So I'm trying to find one that doesn't do the selector because you're gonna wanna move to a specific spot to right click on that menu because the menu isn't really an element. Um, in that case, you'd probably wanna do like a mouse down or a button down. How about just a plain, do a double click, button down, button press. I'm trying to figure out where, if there's any clicks. Let's see, search by click. There is an element ID click, touch click, uh, right click, middle click, left click, double click, click. Element ID click button button down button press click any mouse button at the coordinates set by the last move to command okay so you would do a move to oh don't use this one wait there's the move to object there's the mouse we scrolled into view Huh. 
anyway um yeah you do a, a move to uh instead of a move to object you just do move to and then pass in where you want to move to oh my gosh these nuts are driving me crazy element offset i think you can provide null and then move it down to get to where you want to move it to so let's say you could do that test that's kind of a, a funny little test to write there but anyway, let's get into um, into writing our own um, cucumber tests. So if I go under borders, no services. Uh, I had the same issue last time. I couldn't remember where it was. Plugins. I still can't remember where it is. It was uh, cucumber, right? Under usage? Yeah, it was frameworks. It was under test runner and then frameworks. Right, right, yeah, there we go. Okay, so there's the cucumber boilerplate. We had that set up last time. So I'm gonna switch over to that. Um, actually, what was it? It was cucumber boilerplate. And, um, so in here we have some tests and we kind of want to write our own test. So I'm not going to use the boilerplate. Let's let's do our own cucumber. Let's see, what do we have in here? We do have some node modules. What do we have in test? We have a chai. So this was copied over from the previous stable. So I'm going to go ahead and remove that test, uh, test specs chai. I'm going to remove that. I'm going to edit my package JSON because I want to get rid of this one. We don't need it. We do want those. We do want those and all that. Okay, and then I'll change that for no particular reason over to Cucumber. And in here, I'm going to install and save to my dev dependencies. WDIO Cucumber service. I think it's a service. Let's see what it is. In theirs, they use Framework, Cucumber Framework. So I guess that's because it's a test framework. Can you hear my son playing ukulele in the background? He loves that thing. Okay, what happened? I'm just gonna remove my node modules. What happened? Uh, it didn't like Chai Webdriver IO. That's probably because I was had it locally installed. So let's try installing again. This might take a second, unfortunately. Hmm. So for those of y'all who listen on YouTube, um, I'd be interested to read some comments about what y'all think about this idea, and um, maybe even if, even if you prefer me to stream live on YouTube instead of Twitch, because right now I'm streaming this on Twitch, um, but I wouldn't mind moving back to YouTube. I, I used to record these on YouTube a while back, and then moved over to Twitch because I thought it was um, more tuned for um streaming but youtube live has gotten pretty good and i think it's got a lot of the stuff that we're that i'm looking for uh, and a lot of capabilities added to it so um yeah let me know what you think about possibly streaming on youtube live if you think that would work better for you than on uh, twitch because i know youtube live does its own um it'll send alerts out if you're subscribed to my channel and so, yeah. And then let me know what you think about just the, the content of this, how the how the length is, does it fit for you as far as time goes? I know it's like, I usually run about 45 minutes for these things and I don't do any real editing for them. So um, it can be a little bit long. Uh, 
yeah, but yeah, let me know what you think. I'd, I'd love to hear your thoughts. Okay, so I have a Cucumber installed. I have um, NPM, uh, the, the node module is installed again. Let's jump into our configuration file and change some things around. So we do have specs. We're gonna leave that there. We're gonna still test in Chrome. Uh, we'll, we can test the WebDriver IO website. Um, where is it? Okay, and then Selenium Standalone is our service. Our framework is going to be Cucumber. If we go here, that's what we did. So we can pass in Cucumber Ops. So you see we had Mocha Ops here. Um, we can instead do Cucumber Ops. And what do those look like? Let's go here. Okay, so he's got a whole um, framework information and yeah, so we do want to change that timeout. Let's up that to 20 seconds for that timeout. And then um, Cucumber Ops, what else can we do? Compiler. Yeah, so if you use Babel, we could do that. You know, yeah, we're gonna need to figure out where our step definitions are gonna go. Because um, if we go to this over here, we can take a look at their configuration. And you can see they only test features. So let's update that. Go back up to the top. And then uh, I don't want source, I want test features. I'll skip that. So, oops. I'll remove specs. I'll make a new directory called, actually I'll just, yeah. We'll just have test and in it, I'll have test slash basic feature. So we're gonna create a basic feature. Those are gonna be our features. And then what are the other things they have in here? Let's see where their cucumber ops are. Okay, so they load some steps. Try run, fail fast, format, color, snippets, source. Tags, timeout. Okay, so I think the big thing we need to do is require these steps. So I'm gonna make a new directory. Steps. basic.js and then in it I'm going to come all the way down here and require test slash steps slash star star slash star so I'm just going to require let's just do that um, any JavaScript file in my steps folder is going to get required. And I think that's going to load that. So let's see. This is where it gets really confusing for me because I've never really done um, Cucumber.js. So let's see, what do they use in their adapter? Welcome to the stream. If you just joined, I'm talking about Cucumber.js. Um, let me know if you have any experience with it, if you've tried it out before. So I'm trying to write my own. Uh, last time I, I used Cucumber Boilerplate to get started and that one worked really well. I'm now I'm gonna try to write my own test and I'm trying to see what they use. Okay, so they just use straight Cucumber. So if I go over to npmjs.org and let's see what they have. Oops. Ah, uh, Cucumber. So you could write um, your tests all in Cucumber without anything else, without WebDriver IO. They're kind of different frameworks. It's kind of like how Mocha and Cucumber work together. Um, oh, cool, a demo of it. That's a nice place to start. And they have Cucumber. Custom formats, Node.js. Let's take a look at this example. So here's the feature. There's the step. 
Oh, wow, that is complicated. Given, when, then. What is all of this stuff? And then that's the test itself. So let's see, what do we want to do? In our test, we should write our test first, because that seems like the um, the BDD way of doing it. So we're going to have a feature. Did I do that right? No. Feature. And you know what? Let's, um... No, no, no. Not that. Install. Let's see if we have a cucumber. Uh, cucumber. We do. Sublime Bumble. I want the formatter, that's what I want. Get that installed and then switch this over to it. Where is it? Did it install? Let's see. Yes. Oh, that's not what I wanted. I wanted syntax. Cucumber install my syntax for cucumber or gherkin. Autocomplete flavor. Nope. Let's just try that. Set syntax. Oh, that's the steps. Well, oh well. I guess it's not that important to have this stuff. So, feature, simple mass, feature, basic website, basic website, given I. Oh. In order to spread the awesome. This of WebDriver IO as a advocate. I want to have a website. So I don't think any of this work matters right here. It might name your test when you're running it, but I'm pretty sure it doesn't matter too much. So let's see our basic scenario is the home page. Uh, how do they do it? They say easy math, so we're just gonna do home page. And then given I go to the home page, when I look at the top, then it sh the header should be visible. Okay, so I've got a basic scenario here. I go to the home page. So given I go to the home page, when I look at the top, then the header should be visible. So if I were to actually run this out, I would say I'm going to go to the home page. And then if I look up here, I've got um, my little header. So that's my scenario. Now I need to write some steps. I need to write a given step. Given I go to the home page, I need to write a when. And then, because people need to know what I look at the top, or I, not people, uh, the computer needs to know what you mean by it when I look at the top. And then finally, the header should be visible. It needs to know how to assert that. So now is where I get into uncharted territory and try and figure out how this all works. So I've got a basic thing. I want to do my step definitions. So they require cucumber in here. They also have Selenium WebDriver, that's kind of interesting. Define support code, then and when. So I think I'm gonna need this. Let's double check what uh, the Cucumber boilerplate does. So in their source file, they have their own steps. And I think I just swallowed a gnat. Ugh. That's not nice. And there's still a gnat flying around. Oh my goodness, they import a lot of stuff. So they're gonna do a module.exports function given this dot given this dot given this dot given and that's what they do well what happens if I run my test right now it's probably going to say that there's nothing found as far as those steps or as far as that feature goes but let's see if we can even get there if we have it set up enough before we get too comp too uh, involved in that stuff. So it's opening a session. That's good. I think it does that no matter what before it even tries running it. No such file step star. Okay, so we first we need to create a file. So here's our basic file. I'll save it. And then um, maybe I'll do something like that. See how that works out. All right. 
right? Okay. Given I open the URL or site, blah, blah, blah. Open website. So that's one thing I need is open website. What's open website? That's an action. So it either takes a URL, it goes to that page, or it gets the base URL and adds the page, browser.url. So that's all I wanna do. Instead of there, I'm gonna do a basic anonymous function. I'm gonna say browser.url. This is going to accept the URL, right? Cause it either takes, let's see, type page done. If type is equal to URL, type of navigation. Page is what to navigate to and then the callback. I wonder if I need to have that done callback. Oops. Done. Where does type come from? Under steps and then given. Given, I open the URL. So I, I think the first parameter is here, URL or site, and then the second parameter is this. So since I'm not um, gonna do a diff, I'm just gonna see when I go to the home page. So really, I can just, given I go to the home page, this is a very basic test. So I'm just gonna say, load the home page and I'll use dot slash for that and then I'll accept done. Okay, so yeah, what happened there was um, sometimes you can pass in uh, things via variables. So really this could be a variable here of home page. So you could say when I go to the home page or so we put that in parentheses to say that's a variable, that that's something that could change. Um, when I go to the API, and so if it was, um, then you would accept the type here, or uh, I guess page, and then you would do something like if page is equal to home page, then you would do this uh, browser.url else, and there's better ways of doing this from a programming perspective. We'll do dot slash. And what's that API.html I think is for the home, is for the um, API page. So let's see how that did. Again, no such file. Step slash star dot JS. Maybe I've got that wrong, but let's see. Test steps basic dot JS. It is in there. It just doesn't like that. So if I go back to here, what if we do star star slash star? Let's try that, let's see. Oh, this is so 80s. 80s, I don't know. It's nice. Same thing. Did I, I didn't do that right? Test slash steps. Okay. Um, maybe, uh, you know what, I bet it doesn't allow you to use this star star format, which is why they had to load them in manually. Okay, so that's one thing. There's this hotkey I press to bring up my terminal. When I'm recording, I don't use that terminal for some reason. I don't know why, I probably should. Um, I guess it's a little bit easier to see in this format. And so I keep pressing that. Hey, look, it did something. That's good. Let's see if, okay, so it's actually going there. That's pretty good. So now we're gonna get our step is not defined. Wonderful. Okay, so we did make something happen. Uh, we have our basic feature here, given I go to the homepage, and then it looked in here and it says, okay, I go to the homepage. Now let's see if this API works. So if I change that over to given I go to the API page, or just given I go to the API, and then I run NPM test. I'm gonna actually switch over because I keep pressing that hotkey and there's just, there's no way I'm gonna avoid it. So. 
and let's see if it goes to the API page. It did, it did, wow. That's pretty cool. Uh, that's a lot of fun to get that going. So that's the given. Um, now, I could create a new file and load it in, but I don't really wanna do that. Um, I'm gonna do when. Uh, I, I, it's probably better to do separate files for this just so that you can organize it a little bit better, especially when you get a lot of tests. But um, we're gonna just go forward with this. So when I look at the, and we'll say top or bottom, and then we'll say location. And if, I mean, this is kind of a funny thing because you're not actually telling the browser to look at the top, but um, you know, we could, we could, we could do like a scroll to or something. So let's do that. If location is equal to top, then we're gonna do a scroll two. And uh, what's scroll two do? How do we do that again? Scroll two. There's scroll. Is there not a scroll two? No, it's just scroll. Uh, element to scroll to, which is optional. Scroll the specific scroll to specific element with an offset. Browser specific X and Y. So basically I want to scroll to the very top. So I'm going to do uh, zero comma zero. And then um, I really should do like an else if here. If. There, then we're going to do a scroll to and instead of passing in coordinates, I'm going to pass in the footer selector because that's the actual selector, right? Let's see, inspect. Uh, yeah, it's got a footer on it, and that's an element of footer. So, yeah, we'll scroll through that. So, that's our second step, and then I'll go ahead and define my third step here is then this dot then which matches up with here the header should be visible okay this is a fun one so i'll replace that the header should be so this is a bit more tricky because there are some things because you might want to say should not be visible or should exist um there are different things that should that it could match up against so, um, and then this one is also, uh, you wanna say header, but what if you wanna say like the footer is visible or something like that? So that's a little bit trickier. The file name blank is empty, so this takes anything in it. Um, the response status is blank. When I view my profile, so file names, and let's see what's in here. The element blank is not visible. Hey, let's just go with this. Okay, so I'm just gonna copy that. And I'm pretty sure this boilerplate, you could actually use this on your own. Uh, what I mean by that is Oh, I guess not. So there's all these predefined um, steps here that you can use. And these are really helpful. So I was thinking that this might be exposed as a, um, exposed in um, NPM, but it doesn't look like it is. It doesn't look like it's actually something that you download. Um, and, and download to your repository. It looks like it's its own thing that you do. So basically you just clean it up and then write your own features. Yeah, so you kind of use this as a starting point. So that's pretty cool. Um, anyway, back to what I wanted to do. I wanted to, given the X is visible, the element is visible. So this is a little bit, more complicated um you know we could just go with should exist or what was it the the header should be visible we could just do that should be visible and then um in here we don't even pass in any sort of 
variable, we would just say, um, what did they do for their assertions is enabled? So under their support, they have check, I think would probably be it, is enabled, is under support, check. Is visible, support is visible. So what's is visible do? It, element false case done, expect is visible. Okay, so they're using expect. Um, and then I wanna see where are they, how are they loading expect in? Because normally you have to do a, a require expect up here, but it doesn't look like you have to do that in in here so i'm wondering if down in there before each yes that's what i was expecting to see um they're basically setting um expect as a global in there so um okay so um right now i'm going to say expect and then i'm going to pass in my header element which is actually main nav i think main nav to be visible and uh to be visible that's not correct because um it's actually not what it's checking it's to not equal true so expect is visible to not equal true so it gets the visibility of the element and then it checks that it's uh, not equal to true i didn't realize that you could pass in the message um, at the end i've always been passing in my error message uh, in the in here and i really didn't like it because it just didn't quite flow right but i guess you can pass it in there as well okay um, so I want to do variable is visible, uh, browser dot is visible, um, and then main nav. Let's double check what that is. Cause I don't remember if it's main nav or what, um, spec. Yeah, it is just a plain main nav. Okay. Main nav. And then I'm going to expect is visible to be true, visible to be true. Um, so it's a little bit different than what they have here. This is just checking that it should be visible. Let's save that and run it. And while that's running, welcome to the viewer who just joined. Nice to have you along. I've been talking for about 40 minutes or so, 45 minutes or so about uh, Cucumber JS. Um, let me know if you've uh, ever used Cucumber JS in the past, if you've even used WebDriver IO, because I know that um, some folks join who have not, um, who are kind of coming in from the outside, um, not through the WebDriver IO website or anything like that. So, uh, what I'm doing right now is I'm just testing that you can go to the home page and see this header. And I'm using Cucumber JS to do that. So just to recap, um, we've got a basic feature here that we're describing, um, and then um, we have to define all of our tests, uh, all of our steps for it. So let's see how that test ran. Let's see if we get anything from there. Did it freeze up? Oh, that's right. Uh, Browser scroll two is not a function. Oh, that's right, because uh, scroll two isn't a thing, it's just scroll. Whoops, I'll try running this test again. Home page six, I look at the top. Oh man, what did I do? Why is there a six in there? Scenario home page. That's so weird. Why is there a six in there? The header should not, oh, it should be visible. Oh, that's right. So expect is not defined. That's because I forgot to add it down here in my before uh, hook. So I need to go up and add that to my before hook. So if I go back to the boilerplate, I can see that's where they do all that. I'm just gonna copy this whole snippet. It's a pretty uh, neat little snippet. You might wanna keep yourself. Um, I'm not gonna use assert or should, I'm just gonna use expect, but. Um, this is one of those things that I would have in one of my boilerplates as well. Okay, let's run this test one more time and hopefully things will work just fine. Oh boy, what did I do? Why is there no comma there? That's probably my fault. It wasn't failing before because um, it was all commented out. So 
That's why there was no comma there, was because um, it was the last item in it. But because I added a new item, oops, um, I had to add the comma in. Oh well. Okay, let's see how this test goes. Oh, it's loading the API page still because I didn't change it back. Oh well, but I do have it passing, so that's good. Um, and then we could change that up to be the header should be visible. Um, instead of header, we could pass in the element um, main nav should be visible. And I think we would pass that in quotes. Let's see how they do that in here. So in their example, they did have an example in here, sample snippets. Um, I expect the element. Okay, so they do pass it in quotes for there. So you have to do the same thing. Element. And I'll use double quotes. I don't know if uh, Gherkin syntax is quote specific. Um, let me know if it is. That'd be a good thing to know. And then should be visible. And then I could actually say, then the element and the element footer should not be visible. And if I go back over here, then I need to update this test to kind of match what they had in this in their boilerplate, which was um, all of this. So I'm just gonna copy all of this out and replace my function with that there. So it's gonna take the element we wanna test on, which is gonna be here, the element. And then um, they probably use that, uh, something like that to get all the items. Let's see, do we still have that open? I do, given, not given, it's under, uh, not when, it's under then. Then I expect the element is not visible. This is it, I expect, that element blank is not visible. So there's something uh, interesting here. And that is, is not visible. This little thing right here, this is an optional negation or false case. Um, Chai has things like this too. You can see um, not versus um, no not kind of thing. Um, and so this is when you're writing a step definition, you can have a, an optional negation or false case. So here we're gonna say the element blank is not visible. So if I go back here, the element blank, um, instead of should be visible, we're gonna go is visible, is not visible. Just switch that around because that's the syntax they used in there um, when they wrote that up. And so let's try that out and the element footer is not visible. Let's try that out and see what we get. And then the last thing I'm gonna do before signing off today is I'm gonna change this to say, when I look at the bottom, which is going to trigger this scroll, it's gonna to scroll to the footer. And I'm gonna um, make sure that this fails when it gets there. Unexpected token. It didn't like the way that I wrote that, which kind of makes sense because I didn't write it correct. That's a different format. So let's try that again. That's the fat arrow function, which I could use, but I just want to keep things simple, plain, old, very old JavaScript. Oh, it's missing after the argument list. Where, where is it missing that? Yeah, because that shouldn't be a semicolon that's a function is that where it was complaining basic 46 yeah it didn't like that I don't think it liked that oh. man May is almost over I can't believe that
Expected element footer to not be visible. Expected true to not equal true. Expected is visible to be true. To not equal true if false case. So what happened here? So expected true to not equal true. Expected element footer not to be visible. And so when we did the is visible on that footer element, um, it said that, oh, at the top, no. I don't think I had updated that. Oh, it's because it's I'm using is visible. I don't need to use is visible because yeah, that makes sense that it's visible. I mean, um, is visible within viewport. That's what I'm doing wrong. So if I come back over here and there's is visible and then um, let's search for that. That'll just check to see if it's visible on the page at all. We want to check that it's within the viewport. So we gotta change this, is not visible within viewport. And then we're gonna use that not to be visible within the viewport. So I could have left that as uh, is visible, oops, and not updated it, but I wanna, I wanna stick with some good naming. So I'm gonna change that to within viewport. So then the element main nav is with, visible within the viewport. Okay, try that one more time and now it should pass. <laughs> okay, now we have it passing. So I'm going to look at the bottom this time and it should fail. So you'll know, I do, um, I do think I'm gonna write a um, add-on to my course. Yeah, there we go, expected it to be visible within, and it was not, so we can change that. Um, is not visible, and let, you know, let's do another scenario just to make this a little bit more official. So what they have two, scenario outline, much more complex stuff. And I'm wondering, do I have to do, When I look at the bottom, then and then. I wonder if I can just do, when I look at the top, when I look at the bottom, and I can get rid of, then the element is not visible within the viewport, not visible, and footer is visible within the viewport. So you're kind of writing some more complex uh, cases here. Anyway, I was saying, um, I think I'm gonna do a small add-on module for War Cucumber because it is pretty complicated. So I'll probably do what I did last time, which was go through the, the Cucumber framework and then do what I did this time, which is um, jump into writing our own steps and uh, then probably end with something a little bit more complicated. Okay, expected element footer to be visible within the viewport, expected false to equal true. So it did pass that the on 42, where'd that come from? So it loaded, it got one element and then it didn't do the other. So then the element main nav is visible and footer is not visible. When I look at the bottom, then the element main nav. That's kind of interesting. I think I'll have to get into this next time, which is trying to debug. So I think I'm gonna leave this as it is right now um, and then next time we're gonna try and debug how to get past these kind of errors because I don't really know where to look right now. And I don't know what is what, you know, is did it fail on this test or did it fail on this test? I guess I could see expected footer to be visible. Yeah, so it did fail on this test, but I don't know why. I need to know like, did this come back incorrect or is it part of this test that came back? Maybe I needed to 
switch that. I probably need to switch it. Expect is visible to equal. Um, no, no, because I wanted to keep that the same. So yeah, I need to... Maybe this isn't working or this scroll isn't working. So that could also be a thing. So let's, uh, we'll jump into debugging next time. But for now, uh, thank you for listening. And um, I'll have this uploaded to YouTube uh, later this week. Um, hopefully tomorrow. And uh, I'll be streaming live again next week at 4.30 Central. That's Daylight Savings Time. And that'll be on Twitch, unless um, the folks on YouTube who watch it via there tell me to, to stream it on YouTube. But um, thanks again for watching, and I'll see y'all later. Bye!